A How Elemento Son continued the business. Hi and welcome to True Crime, a channel dedicated to the dark underworld of criminal activity carried out by gangsters, mobsters, cartel leaders, and others. In today's video, we unveil the captivating story of Elmencho's son, who defiantly carries on his father's notorious business. Brace yourself for a thrilling journey as we explore how this young heir steps into the shadowy realm of drug trafficking, navigating dangerous alliances, power struggles, and clandestine operations. Join us as we unravel the untold secrets and delve into the captivating tale of how Elmencho's son continues the twisted family business. Elmencho, the infamous leader of the CJNG cartel, remains the formidable commander despite the resurgence of the CG. He holds the title of the most wanted criminal on earth, surpassing even the notorious El Chapo. El Chapo, after being captured, ceded control of most of Mexico, particularly the northern regions, to ensure uninterrupted drug shipments. The volume of drugs under El Mencho's command is staggering, including cocaine, marijuana, methamphetamine, and heroin. His centralized approach to distribution is nothing short of genius, complemented by intricately designed transportation methods that deserve their own visual showcase. Governments across the United States and Mexico have offered substantial rewards of $10 million USD and 30 million MXN respectively for any information leading to El Mencho's capture. This kingpin is affiliated with the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, which has replaced the Sinaloa Cartel as the dominant force in the market. Each new drug lord brings innovation, making it increasingly challenging for security personnel to infiltrate and dismantle these criminal organizations. El Mencho's extensive criminal record includes involvement in organized crime, drug trafficking, and illegal gun possession. Under his leadership, the CJNG has become a prominent criminal enterprise within Mexico, especially in international drug trafficking operations. But it's not just El Mencho who carries this legacy. His son, El Menchito, follows in his father's footsteps, immersing himself in the treacherous world of the CJNG. How did El Menchito become entangled in the business of the CJNG? How did he perpetuate his father's legacy in the underworld? These questions will be answered, along with many more captivating insights, as you journey through this enthralling video. So, buckle up and stay engaged until the end, as we unravel the compelling tale. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe for free and show your support by liking the video. Your engagement will help boost the algorithm, ensuring that we continue to bring you quality content. Feel free to leave your comments. We welcome your thoughts and opinions. Let's delve into the background of El Menchito. On February 14, 1990, in San Francisco County, California, Ruben Oscaro Gonzalez was born. He holds dual citizenship with Mexico. Alongside Ruben Garabea Gonzalez, he goes by various aliases, such as El Jadar, El Rubencito, El Rojo, El Nino, and El Menchito. The latter is derived phonetically as the diminutive of his father's nickname, Nemesis, who is none other than El Menjo himself, the head of the CJNG, one of Mexico's most wanted criminals. El Menjo's sister is the mother of the boy Nemesis, widely known as El Menchito. Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, a former boss of the Millennial Cartel in Los Cuenas, shares the same bloodline. Additionally, Oscar Gonzalez has three sisters, Jessica, Joanna, and Leisha. In the realm of Mexico's relentless battle against organized crime, one agency stands as a stalwart defender of justice. This agency, known for its unyielding pursuit of criminals, brought forth a man named Oscar Gonzalez. Summoned by the relentless hands of law, he was thrust into a world of investigation and questioning. Surprisingly, though, no formal investigations or arrest orders were found against him in the state of Jalisco, as confirmed by government sources. On that fateful day, the 1st of February, Oscar Gonzalez was swiftly dispatched to the High Security Federal Social Rehabilitation Center, ominously referred to as Antiplano. Rumor had it that he had been incarcerated for the gravest of offenses, drug trafficking, money laundering, 
had the unlawful possession of military-grade weapons. However, he vehemently pleaded not guilty, asserting that his humble existence revolved around the construction industry and the sale of cars since his tender age of 16. In a surprising twist, he claimed that his mother had bestowed upon him a property acquired during his childhood and duly registered under his name as a token of appreciation for a military operation that resulted in the capture of a certain USA Guerra Gonzalez. While the wheels of justice spun, chaos erupted in Guadalajara. Gunmen, presumably under the command of a faceless mastermind, set ablaze three buses in the heart of the city. Fortunately, no lives were lost and no injuries were reported. Promptly, the U.S. consulate in the region issued an advisory urging American citizens to exercise caution and confine their travels to the southern part of the urban expanse, including the main highways leading to the Guadalajara International Airport. In the face of such turmoil, the Mexican government implored its citizens to remain composed and carry on with their daily lives. The authorities, well aware of the potential for violent retaliation from organized crime, placed the Guadalajara area on high alert, prepared for any onslaught that may come their way. After a series of legal twists and turns, Oscar Gonzalez was ultimately released from the confines of Altiplano on that fateful day, the 16th of October 2014. Yet, freedom was fleeting as members of the AIC swiftly took hold of him upon his departure from the facility. It was during this time that a judge from the state of Mexico acquitted him of charges related to firearm possession, illegal use of military-grade weapons, and questionable utilization of resources. However, his legal ordeal was far from over. Transferred to Jalisco's Federal Social Rehabilitation Center, commonly known as Puente Grande, on the 18th of December, he was yet again incarcerated. A year later, in a meticulously planned operation, the Mexican Army and Federal Police apprehended Oscar Gonzalez once more, this time alongside his brother-in-law, Julio Alberto Castillo Rodriguez. The maneuver, executed with surgical precision, took place in Jalisco Zapopan municipality, specifically in the neighborhood of Lomas de Altamira. Under the cover of darkness, law enforcement swiftly descended upon the gated community, neutralizing any potential resistance without firing a single shot. As they seized the conspirators, a cache of weapons came into their possession, including two R-15 assault rifles engraved with the initial CG, G2JR, and Menchito, a chilling reminder of the interconnected web of crime. In the relentless pursuit of justice, the wheels of the legal system ground onward. On the 28th of August 2015, a federal court formally charged Oscar Gonzalez with unauthorized firearm possession, utilization of military-grade ammunition, ownership of five weapons exclusively meant for military use, and participation in organized crime. The evidence presented in court primarily consisted of intelligence reports procured by law enforcement and legal representatives. The intricate web spun around him grew more intricate by the day. The saga continued, with Osgur Gonzalez being shuffled from one facility to another. In October, he found himself relocated to Matamoros, Tamalapas, specifically to the Federal Social Rehabilitation Center No. 3. Yet, even within the confines of imprisonment, he refused to relent. He lodged a writ of impero, alleging mistreatment and torture, thereby prompting a fresh investigation by the PGR. This investigation led to a new arrest warrant in the same month, accusing him of being the second in command of the CJNG and orchestrating the murder of rival drug users. His alleged involvement in international narcotics trafficking only added to the mounting charges. The court proceedings became a battleground of evidence, with intelligence reports serving as the primary ammunition. The never-ending dance between justice and criminality took yet another turn on the 4th of November. In a federal court, Oscar Gonzalez and five other suspected CJNG members faced charges of cocaine trafficking. The case grew more complex, veering into the depths of an international conspiracy. As the legal battle waged on, a glimmer of hope flickered within the heart of Oscar Gonzalez, prompting him to request a return to Altiplano at the dawn of 2016. 
Alas, his plea went unanswered, and he was sent instead to the Federal Social Rehabilitation Center No. 13 in Nava, Coahuila. As the intricate legal web tightened, a new player entered the stage, the U.S. District Court of the District of Columbia. On the 3rd of February 2017, an arrest warrant was issued by the American government, courtesy of the Drug Enforcement Administration. According to the DEA, Oscar Gonzalez, also known by various aliases such as Rubensito, El Rojo, El Russo, and El Nino, had been an active participant in the illicit drug trade between Mexico and the United States since 2011. The United States Department of Justice, not one to shy away from seizing ill-gotten gains, intended to seize all assets derived from his drug empire within American borders. In the midst of legal turmoil, a startling revelation emerged. Oscar Gonzalez, known as El Menchito, openly denied being the son of Nemesio Cervantes, the alleged leader of the Jalisco Nuva Generation Cartel. In a heartfelt letter to Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, he expressed confidence in the Mexican government's ability to ensure a lawful extradition to the United States. El Menchito, now 31 years old, decried the anomalies and irregularities that marred his detention process. He passionately professed his innocence, claiming acquittal from all the charges leveled against him over the past five years. In his secluded existence, he pledged to abide by regulations, causing no harm or trouble to anyone. As the wheels of justice turned, the inevitable came to pass. Oscar Gonzalez, El Manchito, was extradited to the United States on the 21st of February 2020 after extensive deliberation. The day after his arrival at Washington, D.C.'s Dulles International Airport, he appeared in court to face the unanswered allegations that had plagued him for so long. With unwavering determination, he pleaded not guilty to charges of firearm possession participation in an international conspiracy to distribute cocaine and methamphetamine. As his trial unfolds, the fate of El Manchito rests in the hands of evidence and legal arguments, unveiling the secrets that lie hidden within his ongoing investigation. Even as he denies his familial ties to the alleged cartel leader, who knows what revelations may emerge as the story continues to unravel. Thank you for watching another amazing video from our true crime team. Like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned to our next real-life true crime video.